Okay, so if you watched our previous video, you saw that we had interconnected two local area network switches. Uh, so we built a LAN round here and a LAN round there with a crossover cable, basically making one big LAN. Uh, we've got one DHCP server on here. This gave out all the addresses. And we said the problem was, whilst this network does work, broadcasts by their very nature go everywhere on the network. Uh, and it's just because that's how local area networks based on switches work like that. They just forward broadcast. And if we kept growing this and growing this, basically our network would become quite sluggish because broadcasts are sent around everywhere. So the question is, how can we actually do this properly? How can we build a proper network? Well, the first thing we do is we don't need to connect the networks directly. So we'll get rid of our crossover cable. The second thing then is if this is going to be a separate local area network from this, then it will have to have a different range of addresses. So what we're going to do is we're going to put its own DHCP server on here. There's our server. We're going to connect that server up just like we have done before. Oops, so we get straight through cable. I was tend to plug it in at the end on that fast ethernet. And on this server, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a different range of addresses. So on the fast ethernet interface, rather than it having um, an address like it did before, we're going to give it 192.168.8.1. So this is an 8.1. If we look at the server over on this LAN, this is 7.1. So these now have got different address ranges. This is a 192.168.7 network and the one on the right is a 192.168.8 network. Okay, so let's just check that. So here's our server. Um, get its IP address, 192.168.7.1 and the PCs in here are 7. Dot, came up there. Come on, get it back. 7.23 7.3 etc and on this side our server is on 8.1 and our PCs are on oh they still got a self self signed IP address you may have noticed the reason for that is when I went to DHCP yes the pool got set up here correctly but I forgot to turn the service on so there you go the service is on that's on now if we just fast forward time uh, about three goes maybe we should do it and there you go it's now got addresses in the 8 range so our two networks are set up Excellent. So how do we interconnect our two LANs now? Well, they've got different IP address ranges, so we can't connect them together to make one big LAN because that breaks the rules of LANs. All the addresses have to be in the same range. So this is where we need our router. So here you go, we've got our routers down here. We're going to drag up this one, a 1941 router. If we just go and have a physical look at it, you can see on the back here, if we zoom in, it's got a couple of ports. If you've got good eyesight, you can see that these are gigabit ports, G00, and zero one. Don't worry if you can't see that. If we hover over to the router, you'll see it comes up telling me I've got these two uh, interfaces, gig zero zero and gig zero one. So what's gig? Well, gig is a thousand, which means these ports run at a thousand million bits per second compared to the fast Ethernet ports, which are a mere hundred million bits per second. And to connect them in, well, we still go and get our straight through cables again. So here's our straight through cable. We'll go from the gigabit port here and onto the switch and well actually there's a gigabit port on the switch so now we've got a really fast connection between our switch and the router i'll go from gig zero one on that side into the switch and i'll go to gig zero one there now you'll notice that the links are red this is because even if we advance time that won't help it's because we've actually got to configure the links and bring them up because it's a, a router device so if we go into the router we go to config and we go to the interfaces, there's gig zero zero. You'll notice some commands happening down here. This is called the command line. We could type stuff in here if you knew what to do, but we're gonna do it all through the GUI. So there's our interface. We switch the interface on. We go to gig zero one and we'll switch the interface on. So both of our interfaces are now up. Excellent. And if we forward time, there you go, everything's gone green. Now, just because we put a router here and we've got the interfaces on, doesn't mean it's naturally going to work. What you've got to appreciate is a router interface, so this interface here, gig zero zero, is actually a device on the network. So this network sees this router through this interface here, which means it needs an IP address in 
the 172, 192.168.7 network. And similarly, G01 on this side needs an interface in 192.168.8 network. Now, by default, we tend to use the first or last IP address of the ranges. Now, at the moment, the servers up here, we gave them the first IP addresses of the ranges, which I don't really want to do. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is chart, start changing some IP addresses. Now, if I just start changing IP addresses on devices, they might start conflicting with some of the devices. We'll give a go and see what happens anyway. So I'm going to try and move the server up to 7.2. Um, oh, and actually that worked, or it appears to have worked, which is good. So let's just check. Yeah, our server is on 7.2. I must have been, meant none of the PCs actually got that address. 7.3, it's quite interesting. I thought one of them would have had that address. I expected that to cause me a conflict. Uh, not sure why. Anyway, uh, let's go and do the same over here. We'll go to the one on the right hand server, fast ethernet, and we'll change that to 8.2. Okay, and that appears to have changed as well. I was partially expecting a conflict, but I'm not sure why. Right, let's just, um, what we're gonna do now is because I'm not sure what the IP addresses are on this, these ranges are, um, I'm just going to power cycle all the devices again. Now what you may have noticed is the router now seems to have lost the connections. The reason is quite simple. When we came in here and we went to the config and the G0 and we switched it on and G01 and we switched it on, what we needed to do is go back to the global settings. After doing that, let's go back to our global settings and save our configurations. So this saves the interfaces coming up. Um, fast forward time, there you go. So next time we re reboot, that should come up okay. So there is our server on 7.2 now, and our PCs have got addresses um, from that pool. So now we can give the addresses on our device. So gig 00, should be able to give it the address 192.168.7.1. See what happens. Yeah, that seems to have worked okay. And we'll go on to the one on the other side. So remember, this is now the one on the right hand side going over to the second LAN, gig01. And we want to give this the address 192.168.8.1. And that seems to have worked as well. So fantastic, our router now is connected with this port here into the LAN on the left hand side with 7.1 and the one on the right hand side with 8.1 so it's a device in our network now i said i was a bit concerned about the ip addresses because if we go back to our servers and dhcp you can see that it's starting at 7.0 actually i'll start at 7.1 and we've now used 7.1 for the router and 7.2 for the server so generally we find that this um, devices on our network that need static addresses ones that we don't want the uh, DHCP server to use. So rather than starting at 7.0, what we can do is we can go into the start IP address field here and we can change this maybe to 10 uh, and save that. And you'll see now it's updated the DHCP server. So the addresses should start at 7.10. So we'll do that on both sides. This will just make sure I don't get any conflicts in the future. So my one in the 8 server is going to start at 8.10 as well. Which now means I've got all the addresses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to use for fixed devices. I'm only using 1 and 2 at the moment. Um, we'll just power recycle all the devices again. Um, we should just make sure all the IP addresses. Now, hopefully, we shouldn't find any lower down. There you go. Oh, so it's still self assigned, just waiting time. Seems to be taking a, a long time sometimes. We've got quite a lot of devices on our network now. Um, oh, so it's still not coming up, not sure why. 169, let's just check I didn't do something stupid. DHCP, oh, for some reason, did I click it off? Maybe I missed that. Let's just check both of those. I know that one's on. So hopefully on this side they are all 8.13, we shouldn't find anything below 8.10. There you go, 8, oh, there's the 8.10. And on this side, if they've now come up, 
at 169 now we should be able to fast forward time a bit and let's just have a look there we go 7.1 so our network's working now which is really good so now we've got our two lines completely split up let's have a look what happens if we take our pc again and we want to connect our pc into the network so again we'll go for a straight through cable we'll connect our pc in on port 13 uh, just fast forward time to get the link up. There you go, the links up. What I'm interested in now is when this now switches on for DHCP. I'm going to go into the simulation mode. I've got DHCP set already, which is good. Go into the PC, go into the config, fast Ethernet settings, and set DHCP. Okay, let's have a look what happens. Well, there is our DHCP packet. Let's run time forward. It goes into the switch, which remember will broadcast it out because it is a broadcast packet there you go it goes out to all the devices and all the devices ignore it apart from the server which has got the green tick obviously the server responds to broadcasts and there it's re sending the reply back offering the address out which goes into the switch and it's broadcast you may have noticed the router is blocking it the router does not forward broadcast to other lands so we've segregated our lands up the pc that wanted it has now got that uh, reply it now responds saying, yeah, I'm quite happy with this address. I'm quite happy to accept it. That gets broadcast out. And finally, the server will reply and send it back down to the PC with the offer having got the address. And now if we go and hover over the PC, the PC has now got its seven address. So that's brilliant. DHCP now is working and broadcasts are being constrained onto the actual LAN, which is one of the main advantages of breaking bigger LANs up into lots of separate LANs. Because lots and lots of things use broadcast and it just basically ties up the network with broadcast traffic and all the PCs having to listen to it to decide that they don't want it. Okay, so come back out of simulation mode, I'm back in runtime mode. Now the very last piece of our jigsaw. If we've got our connectivity, can we get around our network? So let's just have a look at a PC over here. Um, let's get rid of that one. So let's go and have a look at this PC over here. It's got address 7.10. So presumably from my PC here, I can go to the desktop and I can go and ping 192.168.7.10. And hey presto, yeah, I get my replies back. So I've got connectivity across the network. What about connectivity through our network and across to the other side? So there's a PC here with an address 8.14. Let's go back to our PC and see if I can ping 192.168.8.14 and the answer is oh no I get a timeout okay so why did I get a timeout well on this PC here its address was 7.23 and you were trying to ping another device in the same network 7.10 or whatever it was well the PC will know that that address is local on its network so it will be able to send that out to the switch and it knows that somewhere off the switch that address exists and something else happens in the background to make that work. But when we need to go to a different network, because we were going to the 8 network, the computer now says, ah, I'm in the 7 network, you're trying to tell me to go to the 8 network. I've got no idea where the 8 network is. Well, looking at our picture here, we can see that the way to the 8 network is indeed through the router. We've got to go to the address of gig ethernet 0, which is 192. Oh, our gig ethernet address is gone for some reason. I guess that we didn't save it. So just quickly go back into my settings, gig ethernet interface. Oh, let's put those in. 192.168.7.1 and 192.168. Dot eight dot one. So I've got those in. Remember, I should go to settings, and I should hit save. Otherwise, they won't be saved. Okay, so those addresses are up now. Um, it needs to know to go to this address seven dot one to get off the network. In fact, all these devices need to go to seven dot one. They are their default way out of our network. They are a, our default gateway to the rest of the world. So all these PCs need to know that the default gateway is in fact this address here, 7.1. And the device that tells them that is the good old DHCP server. So if we come to DHCP up here, we can see we've got this field called default gateway. 
if in here we put 192.168.7.1 we are now um, so we do that just save that to the pool so there's our default gateway we need to do the same on the other server as well so we'll go to services and we'll tell it its default gateway 192.168.8.1 which is the router I'll put 182 so I'm going to work 192.8.1 and we're going to save that so now that is our two server setup sending out the right default gateways to the PCs on their LANs so let's see if it works now I think we had the PC over here I remember which had the address uh, 8.10 we'll go for that one we should be able to now go to our command prompt and ping 192.168.8.10 okay our request is timed out why did our request time out let's just go and look at our PCs well you can see that the gateway there is still zero because they haven't learned the new information what we need to do is we can either um, fast forward time and wait for DHCP to do it it's probably easy just to power recycle all the devices again let's fast forward time let's get everything back up now when we hover over a PC what you'll see is the gateway has come in as 7.1 on the PC over here and on the PC over here is the gateway is coming as 8.1 so let's try it one final time ping 192.168.8.10 I think it was and hey presto hooray it came in notice the first packet often fails and that's uh, some underlying protocol that's sorting some other things out but you can see now we finally have connectivity and if you want to see that in simulation mode we'll go to the simulation mode button we'll uh, clear all the filters edit filters and just pick up ICMP which is where our pings are so we're in that mode at the moment go back to get our PC send the ping there's our ping packet and then we capture forward you'll see it goes to the switch goes to the router comes back from the switch the reply back to the router back to the switch and back to the PC giving us our result hey presto we've interconnected two LANs using a router set up all the IP addresses set up the default gateway set up DHCP to ignore the addresses and built a really great functional network well done